feel when you first started on GOAT with six NBA losses, finals losses. He cannot. That's not true. Um, because we don't know what Jordan would have done had he had stayed in the league longer. He let Phil Jackson play him and uh, convince him to leave. So we don't know because, again, that's part of the GOAT talk is his endurance and his consistency and how many games he plays. And as you know, um, you know, Michael Jordan, um, as you can see with his recent interviews and these like red eyes, you know, wasn't really taking care of his body and everything about LeBron from the amount of money that he invests into his body to allow him to play at this level at year 17. We don't know what Jordan would have done in year 10, year 11, year 12, if his body would have started breaking down. And we also don't know how many losses he would have had, how many times he made it and then didn't make it. We don't know that because his career didn't last as, as long. And for that simple fact, again, put him in the GOAT conversation because doing anything for 17 years in a row is difficult, let alone being a professional athlete. Like, give that man some props. And he is still physically dominant, you know, because did, was it, a, you, you watched the finals with me. Did you see the young man, Jimmy Butler, playing those same minutes? He over there tired. He was tired. He was tired. He was exhausted. He didn't have anything more to give. And here you got the older man still running up and down the court, still making it happen, carrying the team on his back. Come on. Come on. I don't have to paint this. Oh, you know what? Oh, you you, you got it. You got a gift. You got a gift with your beauty and your tongue, man. You you just made that shit sound so magnificent, and you know <laughs> it was so much. It was so it's much malarkey I'm talking about. If I just had some emojis going on in the background, you know, <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, you made it sound so good. But we ain't gonna even talk about LeBron right now. We just gonna let that sit on the side. Let it sit on the side. But yes, definitely. He's goat, goat ish. He's knocking on the door. Stop hating on that man. I've been keeping up with the uh, the presidential thing because, for one, I don't know about how they do it in Cali, but these motherfuckers down here, don't you know they have the audacity to text me on my phone, Mr. Uh, such, such and such, are you going to vote? When I watched the NFL, and I, you know, I'm black power like a motherfucker. I got my stance against against the NFL, but mm -hmm. my mom was past the Niners to me. I can't, you know what I'm saying? I can't just let football go. You feel me? But I be pissed off at them. I'm pissed off at basketball too. But every time I watch this shit, I'm reminded to vote. Yeah. Reminded to vote. And and then I come to this. I swear, man, the South can be just like uh, what's the name of the movie? Uh, Get Out. You think mm -hmm. I'm bullshit, man. man. Ah, man, listen here. These motherfuckers come up to you. Did you vote? Are you make sure you gonna vote? Or make sure you vote now. Are you voting? Are you voting? Who are you voting for? Well, goddamn it, if I'm vote, what the fuck you need to vote? No, I'm gonna vote for. Mm -hmm. Y'all know if I'm gonna vote. Well, that's none of your business. Mm -hmm. I'm voting for Trump. Well, why you gonna do that? Well, none of your goddamn business. Why are you ass? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? And it's mm -hmm. like they are acting like voting. It should, by law, by paper, which by laws written by men on so on paper don't mean the most shit, but it's supposed to be on paper, whatever's written, whatever. If, it, if it's fulfilled, it's supposed to be a good thing, but if it's not, it's hypocrisy. And we done spent so many years. Hell, they even tell us, oh, your people died. They died, they hung, got hung on trees. Just a vote. <laughs> no, that was just killed. <laughs> Don't you think? But like I said, down here, man, they just so brainwashing, conditioning, holding hands. You know what I mean? Uh oh. And yeah, it's just a lot of that down. So, what do you think about the, especially with the black community? How they are pushing voting it, but not, they not putting the nothing into the community. You no, know, all the little uh, boys and girls clubs, that shit gone. Right. Do you remember? Do you remember that coming up in the, when you was young? You know, so a center somewhere you can go play. 
That if yeah. your mom getting on your nerves, you can just leave. Yeah, right. You know, the recreation center. But can <laughs> I can I just say I'll start it off by saying that I mm. think that there are two things can be true, and I, okay. I think that there are mixed messages being sent, and I and I I'm going to share what I think. But I remember on a different episode, if you will, we talked about. Um, we talked about not a boys and girls club or a community center, but we talked about um, parks like diamond, baseball diamonds, just missing. And yeah, and so to say that they're missing makes it seem like it's this big mystery, but voting or not voting is the reason why we don't have boys and girls clubs um, and community centers or Little League. So I think it's very dangerous to um, passionately empower Black people to withhold their vote without um, clarifying that statement with other action plans. I think a more accurate way to communicate to the Black community would be um, not to say voting doesn't matter. Maybe we should change it to one vote doesn't matter. And I do hate the way they put so much emphasis and so much pressure, pressure on this presidential election and they don't put a lot of attention to the other elections because the other elections matter the most. They just do. Um, by the time you're voting on president, it's almost too late. I mean, that isn't going to change anything because there are so many other things that touch us. And that's something that's at the federal level, it's at the top. But there are so many other things um, around us that touch us first that we need to be concerned with. And the other dangerous thing about don't vote is that to me signals that you know, once you say that, if you say we're not going to participate in the society in which we all live, we're not going to participate to improve it, then to me, that means that you have like boats lined up in the marina and you're going to take us to this new country. Because if you're not saying that, then what you're saying is I should abdicate all of my power, but continue to live in the society and have no say so with what goes on. And that also doesn't seem right. Um, so that concerns me, that concerns me. And then I will say, um, the thing is we don't teach civics correctly in schools. Perhaps if we did, more people would understand the importance of civics because there isn't anything that we do. There isn't anything that we do that isn't touched by government. That, that's just the way that it is. I'm not saying that it's right and I'm not saying that it's wrong, but everything has to be voted on the water that we drink, our lights, our power, our internet, the jobs that we have, the neighborhood that we live in, the stop sign, everything has to be voted on and can be changed. It's unfortunate if we don't um, educate ourselves and if we don't um, learn from our so-called enemy and, and empower ourselves to make a difference because then we wouldn't have to have the situation of, who you gonna vote for for president. Instead, we would be talking about who do we vote into city council? Where's that office? What did they promise us? What are they delivering, delivering on? Who did they elect for sheriff? Who did we elect to Congress? Who did we elect as a Senator? What bills are they sitting on? Who is in our state legislator? What bills are they voting on? How are they spending money? Who's getting money? Who's allocating money for this? Who's getting money for the airport contracts? Who is determining which minority businesses or if minority businesses get contracts? Who's determining how many new buildings are gonna be built in the city? All of that gets voted on. Voting absolutely matters. It's just that one vote doesn't matter. I don't care who you vote for for president, it's too late. I care about all the other 464 votes that you would have needed to make within a two year span. I also think it's easy to say, I'm not gonna vote, my vote doesn't matter. I think that's very easy to say. To the point of our ancestors who are no longer with us, 
and who did understand the importance of voting because they were not allowed to vote. Um, and anything that someone is trying to take from you, they're trying to take it for a reason. Whether it's, um, I don't wanna teach you how to read because knowledge is power, or I don't want you to vote. Anytime somebody is trying to take it or suppress it, you better figure out why. The other part of it is, again, just being informed and the power of our uh, ancestors dressing up and going to go vote because it was important to them means that all the way building up to it, they had conversations about candidates, they were involved in local government, they sat at the kitchen table talk, and it was, it was fights and debates over cards, over dominoes, who you gonna vote for and why, and we were informed. All of that goes out the window with just easily saying, I'm not gonna vote because it doesn't make a difference. You say the statement and almost 90% of people who say that to you, even if they were gonna vote, they don't know what any of the measures mean. They aren't keeping up with their own civic responsibility. And you know, let's, let's just call a thing a thing. Unless you're gonna move out of this country, why wouldn't you be involved in the very thing that you must abide by? We're not sovereign individuals in this country. So why not take part in legislation? This has been a rant by well, you know, and I'm gonna put my nah, nah, nah. This, uh, 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 this, 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 this is this is excellent because it's good dialogue. Excellent, excellent. Because you have a lot of men, especially like me, who who feel if you do go vote. And like you say, you need to make you need to be informed on what you need to vote about. And you gotta have a list. This my candidate need to do this, 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 this. And if he can't do that for me, uh, you're not gonna get that. That's right. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And not only that, once whoever's elected, what's the plan to go check on this person? And are you delivering? And then if not, who's supporting you? And what businesses do they own? Or in their little stock portfolio, what businesses are attributing to their wealth? Because we're no longer going to shop there, right? You have a lobbyist that support uh, different candidates and they promise this and they promise that, but really the lobbyists are saying, hey, I represent this particular company and I want you to vote so that we get regulations and tax cuts. And that doesn't help our community, it's no problem. All of that is public record. Where's the information for making sure our vote does count? If your vote doesn't count, that's your fault because you need to be tracing the vote you need to be moving ahead and saying once we have you in office if you don't do something for us then everything that you rely on economically we're going to boycott our resources we're going to take that from you you make your money because you have you know I, I hate to just name any company but you know walmart's invested in you um you know big pharma's invested in you then we're going to stop spending our money there we have economic power. We do. Um, you know, it's up to us to use it. It's up to us to use it and to hold our um, elected officials uh, responsible. But like I said, everything from who your sheriff is to how police officers are hired to how much they get paid, all of that has to be voted on. You don't like what's happening? Vote them out. Vote them out. Vote them out and withhold your money. This, this is good teaching everybody. Make sure y'all like, share, subscribe. This is Mickey Ficky, man. This is, <laughs> this is excellent, excellent, man. Hey, so uh, for the switch gears right quick. Now this is the, now this may be touchy with you because uh -oh. we talked about this. <laughs> but it, it, it kind of bothered me to it a, a little bit. Now, are you familiar with uh, Young Jeezy? Yes. The rapper. I love Jeezy. Yeah. You know or about you the woman love, I don't know if he has new music, but I definitely, ooh, come on. The, the snowman era was <laughs> in my heyday. Oh, yeah. His new music. His new, mu his new music. Oh, come see, come saw. No. Uh oh. No, 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 no. He fell off a little bit. Oh, it happened. No, 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 no. no. But yeah. you, know who he's, you know who he's dating, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're mind. about to get married. Yeah, they're about to get married. Yes, I heard. Yeah. Okay. And 
she told everybody on her little show, her little panel, that she had, you know, turbulence coming up when she was young, you know, the mother, always been a dominant individual in the house, you know, making decisions for the husband, you know, that you know, I already know, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so she said she's the owner of her own business, her own lawyer, whatnot, and it could be a stressful thing. Yeah. So when she decides to marry Jeezy, she says she wanted to submit to her husband. Uh -huh. Not be beneath him, not be beneath his foot, not yes of Mr. Jeezy, nothing like that, but submit to him, you know, take advice from him. Right. Uh, his spouse, you know, something like that, you know, to see for his advice on what she got cooking. Oh. And he'd be like, well, baby, but baby, this, uh, could you do it this way? Yeah. Oh, baby, I like the way you gave it to me. Okay, we'll do it this way, baby. Oh, okay, do it. You know what I'm saying? That's submission, not bow down to me. Well, when she laid it all out there right there, <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the comments, right? And, and you know, I love my sisters. I love my sisters. I love them. I love y'all. I love y'all to death. God but. damn it, I love you. <laughs> but come on with it. Man, they were going ham hey, talking about yeah. now nah, you don't need to be submissive to him. Especially Lottie Love. You know, she's looking like she's having diabetes and everything else going on. Talking about no, you, that's a that's a horrible idea. You don't need to submit to that man. No, 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 no. But hold on, you submit to a European, you submit to an Italian man, you submit to something else. But as soon as a brother, a brother trying to be righteous, he ain't demanding on that girl. And you have a problem with her, her or the wife being submissive to the man. What's up with that? And I'm talking about. About ninety-seven percent of the comments, and I, I man, it, it almost had me in tears. And it was sisters. Yeah, it was sisters. I believe they it. was against it. Yeah, I I'm believe, like, um, this may be an unpopular God, opinion. This may be an unpopular <laughs> opinion, but I must be truthful. Otherwise, you know, you know, uh, <laughs> I must be truthful. Otherwise, you know, what a what a it is. It, it oh, can be oh, and. Oh. Maybe a Miss Cotton and oh, conversation oh, if I can't be Miss Cotton. Let hold me just, on one second. Hold on. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay. I'm Let me just say that I have stated. Can you, can you see me? Oh, you say hold on. No, I can't see you. Oh, can you. Can you see me? No, you disappear. What happened? You Don't see, run from this. You <laughs> no, you see Batman, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Go ahead. Go ahead, cook. <laughs> This may be an unpopular oh. opinion, but let me just say that I have stated um, several times in this, on this platform, through this little thing that we do, that we've been doing for a few, a few weeks now, um, I've stated several times that I, I have a traditional home. And so I tend to agree with Jeannie Mai. And I know that that is an unpopular opinion. And I will say that um, it's not necessarily for religious reasons. Um, it's, it's not like I'm taking it out of the Bible. I'm not going to say that. To me, it's just common sense and it's just biology. You know, once you um, sort of break it down to how we're, how we're relating to each other um, in this society as a, as a man and a woman and, and sort of just breaking that down to yin and yang and just energies, it only makes sense that one of the energies needs to be masculine and the other energy needs to be feminine. And I'm not even bringing in assigned genders to that. I'm not even saying um, man and woman. I'm saying the energy of yin and yang, the energy of man and woman. And within that, you know, one needs to be receptive and one of them needs to need to be the outward energy. One of them needs to be feminine. One of them needs to be uh, uh, masculine. One of them needs to be submissive and the other one does need to be dominant. And I just think that that's just common sense. That's just nature. That's what it is. That's what keeps everything in balance. Um, I also just believe in observing to, to understand yourself, observe things that are like you. So when we observe the animal kingdom, and, and, and you just, you, you, you see why the lion is the king of the jungle. 
Um, and I just know that if we didn't make up the world that we live in, if society broke down and we just had to survive, okay? And you had men, male species, and female, female species, which one would just naturally be dominant because that's the way they were created. So I don't feel the need to disrupt that balance. I think that that should be mirrored in the home. Um, and that's just the way it is. I, that's just the way it is in, in my home. And that's just what I prefer. This person was built to lead and be the dominant figure. And they're gonna be the spokesperson for the family. Um, and that's just the way it is. And I, she tried to clarify it with, it doesn't mean that I feel lesser than, um, it doesn't mean that I have less power. It doesn't mean that I'm, I'm not involved in the decision making. It just means that, again, if all this shit that we made up went away, right? Because all of this is made up, the homes we live in, the little lives we leave, that's society, we made it up. I'm just talking about if we just had to go out and survive, I, I physically would need to depend on this person to protect me and my child. I would just depend on the person to protect me from being killed. That's just it. I don't really understand what she said that was so wrong. Unfortunately, I do think a lot of, a lot of, a lot of the women, especially black women that had a problem with it are either one divorcing from the church. And so all they saw was scripture, like, no, that's not true. You don't have to be submissive. That's in the Bible, that's crazy. And the Bible is the, the slave man's religion. And then the other half of it is um, the side effect of the systematic breakdown of the Black family unit, where a lot of women, Black women, did grow up in single-family single, single family homes where there is no father, so they're not very clear on what a man's role is in the home. And how could you be if you didn't grow up with, you know, a father and where the son maybe had to be the man, and that's not natural. You don't know what that's like. And so you do take on this role of, I can be the dominant figure and I can be the person and I don't need to submit. I don't see what that looks like in a family structure. I don't see the point of it. Um, and I think that's unfortunate. I think that's unfortunate because I think that, um, you know, black wealth is gonna come when we rebuild the family unit. I think if we didn't need both energies, then they wouldn't, they wouldn't exist. Um, but yin and yang does exist you need both one of them has to give while you get one of them has to be submissive and it is the feminine energy and that's that's just how i feel i know it's unpopular and you know if you don't like it oh. that's okay you can leave a comment and disagree with me that's all right but that's how i feel that's how i feel wow so so i and another part i was probably thinking that Sister was probably tripping because she's uh, what is she Asian? I don't want to be. What is she? Uh, I know she's of the Asian descent, but I don't know yeah, exactly. Yes, I. You're right. I don't know her. I think I want to say Vietnamese, but I don't know. But uh -huh. I. But I do know clearly she is of Asian descent, and yeah, there's that stereotype that when black men um, step outside of their culture, they do so because they want a more submissive woman. And again, I think two things can be true at the same time. I'm obviously opinionated and I'm obviously strong-willed. It doesn't mean that I can't also be submissive. Those are two different things. You know, I talk a lot, I have an opinion, da, 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 and I'm like that all of the time. It doesn't mean that we have to change our vibrancy. We have to take the bass out of our voice and that we don't have an opinion. Um, I don't think people truly understood what she meant by um, submitting. I really don't think she understood that. Um, but yeah, sometimes you got to just say what it is. She described what goes on in her home. And um, I think for my sisters out there that think that, you know, the stereotype of Asian women being submissive, I think that you let Hollywood allow you to believe that submissive means, yes, sir. Yes, I will not say anything. I'm in the corner. Yes, sir. That's not what you need to be submissive. Doesn't mean you're a doormat to be submissive. Those are two different things. A doormat is a doormat, but to submit to a man is 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 different. Like it's not the same thing. 
You know, I do. I'm serious. I think that they're thinking of it like, oh, you know, he got with a white girl or he got with an Asian woman so they could tell them what to do. Trust me, there's plenty of mealy-mouthed Black women that will allow you to be a doormat and it still has nothing to do with being submissive. It's just a different thing. But very hard to describe again to a woman that doesn't see a need for a man. I, I couldn't be a male chauvinist or whatever and just be like, I don't need a woman, man. I, I, the minister put it like this. To have heaven is to have a woman. That is to have heaven on earth. You go to work. You, as soon as a black man go out them doors, he, he's getting faced hell left and right. Yep. Left and right on a job from individuals. Yep. And when he come home, he got himself a woman. He got heaven. Yeah. You know, you can smell them biscuits getting cooked. When you hit the door, you can smell whatever's cooking. Got the bath water running. The new video game laying on the corner. You know what I'm saying? Yep. That's heaven. Yeah. And then she got something for you later on. You do what it do. <laughs> yeah, like, um, yeah. Again, it's just about energy for me, the complimentary energy, because clearly men are wired differently than women. And the way that men are wired is the way that men are wired. And if you want the energy to not only sync with each other, but sort of glow and grow, you know, each energy has to come together in balance. And then when it's in balance, you could just rise and rise and it's better for the man and it's better for the woman. Because as women, we are wired a particular way. We see the world one way and, it, and we'll do okay by ourselves, just like men will be okay by themselves. But when you introduce the opposite energy, it complete you or compliment you in a way that you really didn't understand until you get that opposite energy and you're allowed to move in the world um differently you, you it just it is like like you're saying as a man it's the feeling of comfort or shelter from the world and i will say as a woman it does feel a little bit like security and protection like i like i will say that um you know having a man around just does feel different even if you have a gun locked away safely in a box even if you can protect yourself even if you can fight even if you're live in a secure neighborhood and you have cameras it's nothing like having a man at home it's just a it's just a feeling it is just a feeling you know it just is um not to say that the only reason why you would want a man is for protection and to take out the trash. But to say that it is the energy, it's the energy that complements each other and that there's just natural roles, both in society and then just the fact that we are creatures on earth. There's just a natural energy that we have moving through this world. One needs the other. And if you didn't need the other, then we wouldn't come together to create more of us. That just is what it is. You need this and you need that. And I will also say in the more, in not the way that I'm looking at the role submissive, my mother, quick story, my mother was telling me this story about her good girlfriend and she was so proud of her son who recently became a fireman. And he was saying that he had a young lady, but that he did, he liked the young lady, his girlfriend, but he wasn't sure if he wanted to marry her because she was like not doing anything with her life, really. And I said to myself, but the interesting thing is he doesn't really know what's going to be good for him because he actually does need a stay at home wife who is interested in holding down the house and having him some some babies for him because can you imagine if 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 he had a woman that was very very business minded or goal oriented to the point where she wanted to be a lawyer she wanted to be a doctor and equally be away from the home and he's a fireman and they live away from the home for two three days that's not even fair to the children that come into that home like people need to know who they match up with so submissive in one household looks different than submissive in another household where you know, somebody got to take care of the home in that situation. If you're a fireman and you're gone three, four days a week, and I'm gone four or five days a week, who going to take care of these kids? Uh, what's the what's the little uh, robot off uh, Jetsons? Is it Rosie? <laughs> oh, Rosie will take care of the kids. Well, yeah, that's true. Or nannies, that's true. You got the internet now. I mean, hell, why not? The, the internet take care of the kids anyway. Shit. No comment. 
No comment. <laughs> you know what? You are very, not only you are articulate, you know, but you're very spiritual. I am. Do you, do you have a base? I do. I, I feel like um, I was raised traditional Christian and something didn't sit right with my spirit. Um, and so then I tapped onto the other side and I was very interested in Catholicism. Like I was super, super religious, like right around college. But then I went through another transformation also in college, which was just a, a good experience for me and really for any child because that's the moment when you change from child, teen, you know, to young woman. Um, and so in defining who I was and discovering who I was, I couldn't put a name for what it was. Like, I'm not really religious. I don't really like believe this, this and that. I'm, now that I'm a scholar, I understand that this book is just an interpretation and that there are other historical pieces. So as my knowledge is growing, I'm divorcing religion, but understanding for sure about spirit and about energy and about just even letting go and but being and floating through life and manifesting and understanding that at an early age like wow if i think about something or want something really bad i get it and not knowing what that was i just thought i was like a lucky girl but like oh later on understanding no that's called manifesting you know that's called um using the law of attraction and that's why that happened and that's why if you focus on something and focus on it and draw that energy to it, you know, it comes to you effortlessly. So just um, being in a position to um, be able to apply scholarship to a deep feeling and being curious and um, giving myself that freedom to walk away from formal religion and into spirituality. Because to me, I, I think that's almost the purpose of everyone's life journey or your time here on earth why else would you be here but to relearn who you are and that has to be a spiritual journey it can't be a material journey we just said you know here we are paying athletes 200 300 million dollars and they're still not happy so it's not money it's not material it's not love the way we think of it then what is it what are we here for just to relearn who we are and then you know we transfer to another plane maybe i don't know and I tell you what, when people lose people in life, like I lost my mom when I was 13. Oh, and that's hard. When that happened to me, yeah, reality set in. I mean, Christmas, well, I don't fuck holidays anyway. But at that time, my, my mindset was like, it don't matter anyway. I don't have it. I don't, it don't matter. Ooh, and and when, I, when I used to see, like, my homeboys talk crazy to their mother, I used to get hot. Oh, I know. Oh, I used to get hot. You know what I'm saying? But they didn't understand. She died the same day Magic Johnson announced he had AIDS. Wow. The same exact day. I went to school the, the same day. I was in shock. You hear me? I was torn. Just like, you know, that Batman, Bruce Wayne's character, it is so true. You can have all that damn money in the world and be the richest motherfucker, but it don't mean shit. No. Because if you go past Batman's character, Bruce Wayne, he's a depressed individual. He's very, yeah. de he's very depressed. Very. He's trying to chase, try, I'm doing all this trying to chase the high of having his parents back. Trying to chase the high, but also to feel anything, to feel something. Yes. I think yes. a lot of us are to the point where, you know, we're numb because we're overstimulated or because we're in so much pain you know, but yeah. yeah it, 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 it is deep and it's, it's life changing. That's why, you know, I cherish every little moment every day. Yeah, my son, as is, you should. My, my son is 21 years old. Don't you, know, don't you know I still open the door and look at him as he's still my baby? Oh, I was, I can only imagine. I couldn't know. People do not know really about that until you have your own kid and I exactly I, exactly regardless I hate of the to say it but it's so true you don't understand until you have your own kids and then you're like I, I literally tell people why didn't you tell me I would have popped out babies a long time ago like why didn't you guys tell me <laughs> you know because this like it's a whole different thing like yeah like oh my god 
No, you learn you learn the real you, you learn the real meaning of sacrifice. You do. And also of unconditional love. It may not be unconditional from the kid to you. It's definitely conditional because they're just trying to survive, you know, and then they go through that teenage, um, that teenage phase and if you're unlucky, then they, you know, whatever. So um but but for you to experience what that means, no matter what, I don't care. Even if she grows up and uh, goes through the unfortunate teen years, I'm still going to just love her. Like, she doesn't even understand how much I love her. Like, girl, you could not do anything to get me to stop loving you. In fact, if you sit still long enough, I might eat you. I love you so much. Like, I just want to gobble you up. Like, I just love her. Like, it just is just like, you don't even understand yeah. Now, now, now. I'm glad you said that. Let me just drop a little wisdom on you. Okay. All that love you just had. <laughs> yeah. You know how girls don't have no edges? You know how some girls don't have no edges? It's thin. It's thin. Yeah, why? It's, it's a thin line between that love and that hate. Yeah, but you know what? I'm hoping that I skip that curse. I, I, it's, 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 uh, I know it's hard. Yeah, for listen, 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 listen to me. Listen to me. Now. If you're any part of God now, you're gonna get them attributes. You know how you know how we is to God. Just yeah, do you just follow my lead, child. Do what I tell you to do. And guess what? When they lie to you yeah. and disobey you, yeah, you're gonna be so hot. Yeah. I think you you're gonna turn orange. I know it. I already know it. Cause look, she's she's almost one. She's still just a baby, but it's then you start Ooh. calling your own mom and telling oh. dad, I'm sorry, but I was a very good child. That was to a minimal. Of course I lied and tried to get away with stuff like any human being, but not excessively so. And uh and I'm still really close with my mom. Like she's my best friend. So I'm hoping oh that I can continue it with my daughter, but you never know. I mean, you just, you never know. And yeah, I already know that she's gonna disappoint me to a point where you're looking at her like, you lying, you lying your ass. I'm hey, gonna you know get out of me and I change hey, it. They gonna become that now that Bernie Mac was talking about. You know that now, the, the MF now, they gonna become one quick. I yeah. mean, real quick. Yeah. I mean, you I know, know no but. I know it's just it, I already know you still it's still like a little toy, like a new little toy. You just open up the present and Christmas. No, she's showing me a glimpse of who she is. Like we ain't the same person she came from me, but she is her own person, honey. She is a Scorpio and she is already yes. showing me it ain't gonna go the way you think it's gonna go because she's already like her own person she <laughs> so i know it's not gonna be a cakewalk but i don't care I, so i told her even when you sting me with your little stinger with your little mean scorpio ass i'm still gonna love you <laughs> <laughs> man i know man that, and you know having a child is a, it's a gift from god it's it a is. gift from god and you, you you develop patience yeah um wisdom and you know, you just you, your tolerance of bullshit is gonna be very at, at a minimum. That's I mean, true. Too. You're right. You, 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 you're you're, so you're gonna become you're gonna become like God. You mm, think I'm bull creator? The, yeah. The minister okay. say the minister say when a baby, especially if you give him your baby your breast, when the baby's crying, you know what this baby's saying? God. Mm. All right. He called out to his mama, but it's really God. All right. Sustain me. Yes. Come on. Keep giving me life. Yeah. I feel wow. it. I feel it. You know, I had a baby late in life and I, again, I didn't know what I was missing, but I was content to be fulfilled. I was content to, you know, be okay because of just my understanding of spirituality was meant for me is already mine and you don't have to do anything extra to get what you're going to get. And so here I am creeping up in, in age until my eggs were almost scrambled. And I said, well, if I don't have my own kids, that's okay. I have two adorable nieces and I love them very much. And I kind of get to a parent adjacently. I love them. They love me. We have a good relationship. It'll be enough. It is not the same. And I'm 
so, I just feel so happy that it worked out for me and that I was able to have kids because it's almost like I didn't know that I would have never been fulfilled as a woman until I had kids. And it's just like a whole different thing. Like, oh, like I said, why didn't y'all tell me before? So I could pop me out by four, five of them already. Uh, it's just a so thing. It's just a thing. Oh, it's why? like... I was going to be happy. I was already like successful and you know, I have, honey, I have lived two, three, four, five lives. So I was going to be okay. Like whatever, if I don't have kids, it's just fine. But no, like, I'm really glad. Like, man. So hold on. So hold on. Miss, Miss Cotton was, Miss Cotton was Miss, uh, out there. Was she, was she wild? Oh no, not Miss Cotton. I have no. lived, honey. Yeah. Honey. Yeah. honey. Yes. I'm on my fourth That's life. True. Come on now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh! You know, you got like an Erica Badu swag, but do you know who you really look like to me? Oh no! It's, uh, it's gonna trip you out. You gonna laugh? <laughs> yeah, it's hair. I, I I don't know if you got long hair or not, but it's not long. I just don't you know perceive to be long, but <laughs> right. It, it. At least I have I edges. <laughs> I'm gonna pull it out for you. I'm gonna pull it out next week for you. It's just braided up. <laughs> you know you favor you favor you favor Cardi B. Oh, that is an insult. No, no, it's not. No, it's, it's not. It, it's it's this, not the nose, but you favor her. Okay. Yeah, plus, do do the accent thing. Yeah, I ain't. I ain't saying you dress like a. Is it the Carmen Miranda shirt? I don't. Cause I mean, <laughs> I don't really feel. No, it. you know, now you know she's straight. She just she throws herself out there, and I think that's so trashy. But that's what I'm saying, just, like, okay. No, but when you did an accent, you remember when you did an accent last last video? Uh-huh. You you favor her. Though. I think mean, I'm not, I'm gonna have to just take it. I'm just gonna have to take it and smile. Let's see. She's definitely just not anyone I look up to on any level. Oh, like no. even as like, oh wow, no, she has a no, no, I'm no, saying like no. no, not even it's not even the stripper thing because I am not a hater like that. I'm just saying, like, her style or nothing about her, the way she wears her hair or even her makeup choices. To me, when I think of beauty, she just doesn't come to mind. But that's okay. If I look like her, I look at, like her. I'm happy with the way the creator created me, so I'm okay. But let me just say, like, I was born smart, like, just smart. You know, I'm not the smartest girl, but I'm smart. I always knew that I was academically inclined. I'm scholarly okay so that's just my talent that's what the lord gave me i don't have to try hard i do well in academic settings it's just i, I discovered that but that's my talent it's not a seat at you know and it's not a seat for all the girls you know and i feel even though people and men and fathers are disappointed when their girls end up on the pole it is still a talent because not everybody can get their ass on a pole and, and, and do what she can do. Not everybody can attract men the way that she attracts men. Sexuality and being sensual is a talent and it's also God-given. We can all take our clothes off. Some of us is not gonna look as attractive as she does, okay? So it is a talent. It is a talent. She got his sis. That, that shit is fake. That's not real. Ooh. Fake, fake shit. No, I like my oh, real. I'm trying to get a girl. Cocoa great. Smalls, a little bit. I got some cocoa butter, you know. You know, I'm just saying like that. that I'm just saying that she may not be able to do what I can do, but I can't do what she can do. I, even if I went out and bought some balloons and a butt and put it here and put that's it here, just so I, no. I can't do it, no. and, it's not, and it, it ain't for me. So that's okay. Like, no. just, it is a talent. Hmm. It's a talent. And, 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 and I seen a couple of videos where they had some girls at the strip club. I don't know why they want to get on the club, get on the pole. And they had that the cellulite thing, yeah. and it's flapping. It's flapping. And they trying to they trying to clap the flap. <laughs> like I said, everything ain't for everybody. That's what I'm talking about. See, that's what I'm saying. You could try it, right? Everybody can enroll in college. Doesn't mean you're gonna do well. Everyone can get on the strip pole, but it don't mean that you're gonna be good at it. You know. <laughs> Oh no no no! I'm no, just no. trying to be positive about the situation. I don't even want to imagine it. All right, let's 
let's get down to two more meaty topics because I have to tell you that I got a hater text from Mister talking about are we gonna eat dinner tonight? And now I feel awful. <laughs> Uh, what you what you plan on cooking? Oh no! I just had to send a laugh emoji because that's just like the funniest thing in the world. Are we gonna eat dinner tonight, Mama? <laughs> like, Damn, time, time to move out that fast. Mm, I know it did. Well, but I it was that was we late we late because I'm late, but that's cool. It's cool. No, no, but 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 look what time it is though. An hour went by, hasn't it? Yeah. Yep. Um, wow, I mean, what, 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 what do you uh, well, cook on something for like, what, what, what do you got? What you got? What you got on your end? That's your talent. See, that's what I'm saying. Everybody can get up here and talk, but not everybody can keep the conversation going. We have already oh. crowned you. We have already crowned you the king moderator. Well, I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know that was, I thought you had something. That's why you said two more times, but what about, do you think about? Let's talk about the debates, because you did say that's 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 great minds thinking alike. That's what I'm about to ask you. Yeah, see, look. So, what do you think about uh, Kamala Harris saying what she said? Because I didn't watch the shit, but I just hear people at work talk about it. It's like, I already know you you wanted to debate her one time, so I already know you probably chopped up and dissected what she said. So, you come in with what yeah. she said. I know. I want to, I want to like Kamala so bad. I, I, re I really do. Um, I want to like her so bad. But being that she does represent this state, um, I didn't vote for her at the state level. And um, right when she was coming up in San Francisco, I was coming up in San Francisco. And we actually did cross uh, paths and cross circles just because like I had already told you, you know, I have already lived my life. I went to school in San Francisco. And so when she was coming up under Mayor Willie Brown at the time, I, for whatever reason was, you know, I was whatever reason. I'm just saying, I didn't like her then and I don't like her now. And I just hate that, I just hate that I feel uncomfortable with the choices that she made. I feel uncomfortable with how she identifies. I feel uncomfortable that she won't say that she will do something for black people. I feel uncomfortable with that. I feel uncomfortable that she has put so many black men in jail. I feel uncomfortable that she's running with a man that has put so many black men in jail. I feel uncomfortable with that. I don't trust that they're going to carry through our agenda. And we already know that the Democratic Party is not the Black Nationalist Party. And it could be that the Republican Party is synonymous with the White Nationalist Party, but it's not the case with Democrats. And the danger of voting Democrat is that it doesn't automatically mean that they have Black people's interests at heart. You know, so do what you will there, but I'm just, I'm very, I, I just, I don't like the candidates that we have um, for president and for vice president, because Biden is so old, a lot of the decisions may eventually fall onto Kamala. It could be that within his four year term, you know, that he doesn't make it, that he passes and she would be the president. And I just don't trust with who she lays next to and the decisions that she's made in her career. I just don't trust that she has my best interest at heart or the best interest for people that look like my partner, people that look like my well not my, not my well you know yeah my dad my brother i don't trust that she has our best interest and that she will in any way do anything to improve the lives of black people and i don't think there's anything wrong with saying that we want to support politicians that are going to actually improve the lives of black people not people of color not minorities black people and it just makes me very scary. She doesn't make me enthusiastic. I think she's a career politician. I know she's a career politician. And you can't trust these politicians. You just can't. You could trust them to be politicians, but you know, she's not the savior. Um, her being elected, Biden being elected, isn't going to change anything. In fact, our work is gonna be 10 times as hard, you know, because it's just a lot. It's, it's just a question. It's just a lot. Do black, yeah. people get, do, black, do black people get Biden and Kamala Harris in? I don't know. I want to throw that back to you because I heard you say you were going to vote for Trump. And I hear that that's a big issue. I hear that Biden and Harris were so busy trying to pander to black women that they have been neglecting the black man and that a lot of black men 
are jumping ship. They're doing the the, the Blexit uh, that Candace Owens has been promoting and that a lot of black men are like, fuck y'all. And they, excuse my language, and they're going on over to the Trump side. So I don't know. You You tell me, like, has she done enough to earn the black vote? Have Biden and Harris secured the black vote? No, I, I feel I feel ditto the mutuals the same way how you feel about uh Ms. Harris. And far as the Trump, um I'm 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 with the ice cube thing. I will go to Trump if I could present something for him, you know, a list. If he can touch on it, at least a little bit on it, I know he ain't gonna be able to fulfill all of it, you know. But at least he, if he addresses it and touch on some of it, mm. then I can bring it back to the community. Not mm -hmm. me, you know, not not personal, but back to the community, a little bit back to the community. I'm cool with it. Then I will roll with it like that. Yeah. But other than that, if it's with this shrewd attitude and you think you're finna give me twelve hundred dollars, nah, nigga, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> you ain't never lie. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Again, um, I don't agree one hundred percent with either party. I do feel. Mm -hmm. I do feel. Um, on the whole, I probably can push my interests further through Biden and Harris, meaning they won't, they won't select from what they can control. They won't select as conservative ju uh, of judges. Um, I think the scary part about what Cuba is trying to get done, um, is that it is very, very economically sound. Um, and of course you can't divorce politics from economics. You cannot. Um, but the danger there is we do, we do tend to um, sort of ingratiate ourselves or mirror what it is that our, our oppressors are doing. And, and so what I'm saying is if we don't, with systemic racism, if we don't change policy, if we don't get to the root of it, it doesn't matter if we make our financial positions better because we're not addressing the bigger issue of the broken system of capitalism that really, really, really begs all of us to look very closely at, are, did slavery end? Or is it that this country is still only profitable because it is exploiting black labor? Is it profitable at the top because these people are working for as little as you can pay them, AKA minimum wage? Because I understand that we may not be in shackles and I understand that we're no longer working for free, but I also understand that you have a huge labor class whose labor is being exploited for minimum wage. And so when he comes to the, him with these economic demands, who is it really gonna benefit? Are we just gonna make a larger middle class but still keep these poor people at the bottom? Because I'm just, I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in, I can eat, but you can't eat. I'm not interested in that. I truly believe that is why no matter how much money you get, it just like, that's why Batman can't sleep. He goes out and fights crime because you can't isolate yourself in your mansion. I, let me just, let me just give you chapter eight of the book, okay, that I'm writing. I cannot enjoy my cheeseburger if it's five people looking at me hungry. Mm. I can't enjoy it. And I think if people would understand that concept, you can't insulate yourself. And as long as I get money, then I'll be okay, right? No, no, we have to change all of it. It don't make no sense that people work for 40, 50, 60 hours a week and still don't have money, that something is not right. That's, that's systemic. That's, that's at, a, at a policy level where we got to redo all this shit. And it ain't nothing on Ice Cube's list that really attends to that. It's just not. It puts more money. Like, he has access to money, so he's interested in more access to money. And a lot of Black people think that if they just had access to money, that life would change. But that isn't the problem, because then you just turn into a white person. So what you're saying is, it's, it's not that Black people are being oppressed. You just want the opportunity to be white with a lot of money, as long as you can exploit a labor class. That's not cool either. It ain't giving us money. That's not going to fix it. It's not going to fix it. If we all have money, then we just turn into you. Mm -hmm. Boy, you know, come on. If we're going to change it, we, we need to change it. That's all I got. Ain't got no. no I'm so glad we got a chance to do this. Yeah. One, 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 one more thing we can cook on right quick. Just, just one yeah. more thing quick. Okay. 
What you think about my boys, man? You think they're gonna sit Garoppolo down? He's hurt. Right? Shut He's hurt. Up. Don't do what Kevin Durant. Sit him down and let him heal. Give him some time to heal because I don't think in the history books that this season is going to be that important. I think get him healthy. I think get him healthy because it's just like they tried to rush Kevin coming back uh, with the Warriors trying to get that finals win and he fucked around and really fucked himself off and had to sit down. Wait till that boy is really healed. Wait till he's really healed and you know, yeah. Yeah, two years off. Yeah, two years off, didn't he? But he, but you see how he's not moving right. No, I'm talking about Kevin Durant. Kevin oh, Durant got two Kevin. years. Yeah, about two years off, haven't he? But that's what I'm saying. If you don't yeah. sit Jimmy down and let him heal, heal, then it's going to be like a Kevin Durant. Like your Achilles is very, you know, that's a that's a very important injury. They have perfected the surgery now, but that can be career ending. And he had to take that time off. He had to take that time off because. He was hurt, and he went back too soon and re-injured it. So the last thing you want for Jimmy is for him to have a real serious injury where, you know, he can't perform. So I say just let him finish healing to when he feels mentally ready and physically ready. Um, because if your mental isn't right, as you know, you just, once again, law of attraction, if he's thinking about being hurt, being hurt, getting hit, getting hit, he going to get hit. You know, because you're in your head, especially as a quarterback, you're in your head like, oh, damn, I, I don't want to get hit. I don't want to get hit. I don't want to get hit. But the only thing you'll return to you is getting hit. She said mental, mental. You mean the Clippers. <laughs> the who? The chokers? The slippers? The slippers? The slippers? Yeah. Get out of here. Who? <laughs> All right. All right, it's so lovely. Like, share, subscribe, y'all. Yes, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll do this again. Peace, everybody. Peace.